Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views, and interviews. Hello, I'm Phil Blizzard in Dubai with the latest edition of Travel Wise, where we'd like to explore different destinations as well as the lives of travelers across the world. For many, including you, perhaps, and certainly myself, the thought of being stranded for several months on a tropical island in the heart of the Indian Ocean sounds idyllic. Hmm. Well, for Ross Sanders, it was a very different story, as we now find out. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views and interviews. We're taking a look at a destination in the heart of the Indian Ocean. We're taking a look at the uh, Maldives with the general manager of the Anantara Kihava Villas on Bar Atoll, I believe. So, Ross, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure, Phil. Thank you very much for, for having me on the show today. Now, give us, give us some idea, first of all, before I get on to a situation you've been in uh, at the resort. Uh, how far is it from uh, from the main gateway? Uh, people flying into the Maldives were flying to Mali. So how far are you from Mali, and how do people get across to your resort? Um, we're located about 135 kilometers from Mali uh, yep. in the Ba'atno, as you mentioned, which is a UNESCO biosphere. Um, so it's one of the most stunning parts of the Maldives. And uh, guests access via a private seaplane, which takes nice. around 30 minutes, that uh, takes off just outside the main uh, airport terminal. So it's a beautiful arrival experience flying over all the atolls and the islands and then touching down right in front of the resort. Wonderful uh, location. I've had the pleasure of going there a few times. Of course, the Maldives is very popular for people from the UAE and uh, flights are opening up to the Maldives. But uh, we're going to talk about your resort, uh, what you've got there, talk about the Maldives, how things are happening there for international visitors. But first of all, you had... A unique form of cabin fever, you might say. Most of have been sort of uh, locked up in uh, villas or apartments or tower blocks. You were locked down, I should say, locked down in paradise in the Maldives. It must have been pretty tough for you and your team. Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody's idea of a dream to be uh, to be locked down in the Maldives. Um, but most people will stay for one week, two weeks, three weeks, uh, but not necessarily for five months or so. So um, we, yeah, we were very lucky in many, many, many regards. Uh, and uh, you'll never hear me complaining about <laughs> it because uh, we didn't have to wear a face mask. Mm. We didn't have to practice social distancing. We were kind of in the safest place on the planet uh, for true. all the time that everybody else was kind of trying to uh, deal with this new normal, which we were only watching on the news. So we had fresh air. Um, we got supplies every couple of weeks. Um, we had enough fuel to run. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a very surreal experience. Um, a bit of an emotional roller coaster in terms of mm, sure. having to close down a hotel and say bye to the last guests. And then having the situation where you have several hundred team members who are actually stuck on the island with you because, um, a lot are from overseas and they sure. cannot fly home. But we also had the situation that in, within the Maldives, even Maldivians couldn't travel for two or three weeks between islands. So they they, they lived one kilometer away. They could see their island, but they, they couldn't go home. So it was very, a very, very surreal experience for the initial kind of month that we were physically locking down. So, I Ross, there's a few things there I was going to ask you about. One, logistics. You said you got the food supplies coming in every couple of weeks. Um, you say we, so, and also the fact that you said bye-bye to your guests. So no guests were stranded alongside you for two months because I've heard of a few places where guests have been uh, uh, locked down for quite a long period of time and having uh, a large bill at the end of it. So uh, you said bye-bye to your guests, you said. Yes, because um, the government, uh, there was a policy which stated that nobody can leave the island. Right. Uh, even the local team members cannot leave the island until 14 days after the last guest checks out. So if I had a guest thing for two months, mm -hmm. I would have had to keep 300 people on the island for until that guest checked out. So wow. it wouldn't have been a very comfortable situation sure. for anyone. So we made the decision which was the best decision for everyone to be able to relocate those guests to, to uh, hotels which were 
which had decided to stay open. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we were able to slowly ramp down the amount of people on the island mm-hmm. and, and, and kind of, uh, lockdown essentially and, and go into that closed, uh, so, closed mode. Yeah. So during the period where you, you closed down, how many staff were there? And uh, I mean, during that period of time, what were they doing? We had, it, it, were, it, it reduced over time, but we had 300 people there for a long time. Um, which then reduced down once the Maldivians were able, able to travel, we still went down to about 200. That 200 were there with me pretty much for close to four months. And only in the last two weeks have we been able to reduce that number to about 92. So wow. we thought an ideal number of engineers, gardeners and people to maintain that would have been about 55. Okay. Uh, so. All our forecasts were built on that number, but in the end, we had several hundred. So, yeah, it was a very strange situation. We had lots of island cleaning. We had lots of – we did some coral uh, transplanting and rehabilitation of our our house reef. Wow. So we got everybody involved in in those activities Mm. to beautify the island while we were closed. Uh, We did a lot of tree planting as well. And we, we tried to turn the time into something positive in, in terms of team building and also beautifying the island. Cause I think one of the things you, that, that we've all seen benefit from this downtime has been nature itself has, has had a big resurgence and, sure. and time to, breathe, time to breathe and time to, to catch its breath without, um, too many people interfering. So, so there was no, the most- no, no chance for your team members to sit around and enjoy the, uh, delight no, as a long term guest. So you really sort of motivated them by the sound of it to do a lot of benefit for your neighboring environment. Absolutely. Um, everybody had more downtime than they've ever had before, <laughs> but they still contributed two or three hours of their time every yeah. day to, to help us maintain and improve. So that we, um, you know, the island was relaxing during this time, but we were continuing to, to ensure that, uh, we got ready for when our guests do return. Sure. So that, that was a fantastic period. I so, think after the initial. Yeah. Ross, I'm trying to initial- visualize the location in the heart of the Indian Ocean. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll take a little musical break, come back in a moment. You can describe to us your, your resort, what you have there how things are being prepared for, for guests in the future. And also we want to find out how the Maldives is looking at the moment for international visitors. So let's take a little break, come back in a moment. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views and interviews. Well, we're off virtually to the heart of the Indian Ocean. We're in the Maldives at the Anantara Kihava Villas uh, Resort. I'm talking to the general manager, Ross. So I want you to create the picture. I can imagine sort of like white beaches, coral beaches, blue seas, blue skies, and tropical vegetation. So to accompany that, what does the resort have? I, I think you're all villas, aren't you? Yes, it's all uh, private pool villas. Um, so it's a mixture of private residences from two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, uh, and the rest are all, all villas with private pools. So on either on the beach or over water, um, very luxurious in size, so perfect for social distancing and perfect for having in-villa dining when we do reopen, because I think that will be part of, of the new service expectation sure. even more so than before. We have the world's finest underwater restaurant, which is six oh. meters in the Indian Ocean, uh, which is a phenomenal experience. It's called Sea. Um, so that's, that's probably our crown jewel. We have uh, the world's first overwater observatory. So we have the power of the most powerful telescope in the Indian Ocean and uh, our sky guru who who does astronomy courses and we serve some champagne. We do dinner on, on the rooftop bar of sky. And then you can take in the stars because the Maldives, of course, there's, there's zero light pollution. We have the best view of the stars possible. I remember so, reading well, we, you had a special event, didn't you, so towards the end of last year regarding uh, activities up in the sky, some cosmology and so on. So uh, mm-hmm. that sounds pretty pr- pretty fascinating. So I just want to go back to the underground uh, uh, and the underwater restaurants. So if I'm sat there dining away, what's going to come to the window? What sort of uh, sea life can I expect to see? 
Um, nine times out of ten, you'll see turtles. Um, <clears throat> we have eagle rays. We have uh, probably a hundred different types of fish that you'll see just from the window. Wow. Because it's, um, <clears throat> it's, our house reef is incredible. It's, it's, it's one of the best in the, in the Maldives. And this restaurant sits right on the edge of the reef and on the deep water. So the coral, coral life around there is phenomenal because of the way that the, the currents bring um, the food source to the coral and to the fish. So breakfast time is beautiful. You see the whole reef waking up and the sun coming through from from the water above you, <laughs> uh, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, lunchtime then is a little bit more active again. And then dinner in the dark is a completely different experience. So you generally see the big uh, giant jackfish, the sharks, everything out hunting at nighttime. Wow. So you see lemons, but it's a bit of a different ambience, com- sure. completely from lunch and from breakfast. So it's a really right. magical, magical experience. Absolutely brilliant by the sound of it. Uh, wow. Um, so what else is there for guests coming into, uh, into your resort? Once, uh, what's your status at the moment? Um, we're closed at the moment. We're looking to open in the last week of September, yeah. um, which we feel will be the time that, that uh, hopefully the recovery is, is taking place and there'll be enough airlift. Yeah, sure. um, the Maldives is obviously dependent 100% on international tourism rather than other markets like the UAE or Thailand that have yeah. uh, domestic markets that they can tap into during this time. So we are 100% dependent on on the flights, but um, flights did resume on the 15th of July. So uh, Qatar, we're, we're in, Emirates have just started, mm. and uh, Etihad will also be will be flying as well. So that's the main flight routes in. So how important is the, the Gulf region, the, the flights and uh, guests from the, from the Gulf? What sort of percentage were they making up of your, uh, your guests throughout the year? It's, um, it's critical, um, especially this time of the year. This time of the year, because it's the summer in the Middle East. Mm. So, of Perfect. course, you know, it's 40, 50 degrees, and it's a sharp four hour, four and a half hour flight to get down to the Maldives, be on the beach. Mm. And it's not, it's not high season at the moment, but the weather is still generally good and a lot cooler than, than you're experiencing at the moment. <laughs> Absolutely. You talk of high season, so, I guess that tends to be sort of uh, December into January for those uh, festive holidays, yeah. Christmas and New Year. High season for us in terms of uh, weather is sort of December through to end of April. Um, so that's the peak the peak period. But of course, Christmas and New Year is, is, is the peak peak. Uh, peak but peak. the Middle East and you uh, eat during these months is, is very important. It normally makes up 10 to 15%. Yep. But, of course, the air, airlift, um, the Emirates, like uh, Etihad and uh, Qatar give is, is critical for the destination. So they were having about three flights per day. Sure. Uh, okay. things. So that, that's a massive contributor to, to the Maldives overall. So in terms of general... Um Access to the Maldives, things are open up at the moment. We've been talking about the uh, airlines from the GCC going across. But, of course, it's, it's an ongoing, evolving situation, isn't it? And things can change at short notice, like we've been hearing about Spain and the UK. So it must be quite difficult for you at times to uh, plan too far ahead. You've got to have a lot of planning, but things could change. Hopefully they will not for you. So, um, Ross, fascinating talking to you. Okay. And... Uh, I guess you're having a bit of a well-deserved break in cooler climbs at the moment. Yes, uh, nice to see some some green grass and <laughs> uh, and be in the UK again. But uh, yeah, we're we're working constantly at the moment on on resetting up the hotel, sure. on, on planning for the new norm as, as everybody else is yeah. around the world. And I think the Maldives does have that added advantage of a, a luxury destination. It is one flight for a lot of people. You can contain uh, and and control the safety very much so on on the private islands sure. and in your villa and in the restaurants. That's so true. I think the Maldives will bounce back once it does. Once international tourism does come back, it will come back stronger to the Maldives than than some other destinations. So we are very positive, and uh, we can see some some positive signs in Q4 and also Q1. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, good to know. You're sounding very, very positive indeed. I'm sure you're absolutely right. People would prefer to go to a smaller destination and have that privacy and enjoy what you've got there. So uh, 
Ross, keep us updated. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on The Travel Show. Thank you very much, Phil. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views and interviews. Thank you, Ross, for joining us on this edition of Travel Wise. Now, before we finish, I'd like to tell you about a new podcast stream which we are launching very soon. It's called Property Wise and will feature the latest real estate news from across the United Arab Emirates and even further afield from cities such as London and Miami, along with a crossover into the travel sector in terms of tourism development projects. So, this is now for Property Wise, coming your way soon. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views and interviews. Travel Wise is a Phil Blizzard radio production. Email me at philblizzardmedia at gmail.com. A Phil Blizzard radio production. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views and interviews. interviews.